Eric, the long-awaited return of Do That But Better. <laughs> I, I'm Zach. I'm Eric. We're How back. have you been? We're good. We had a very busy couple weeks, and now, like, everything has sort of dropped off this week. This is our recovery week right now. What, 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 did, you, what did you have going on? Uh, so I had an online class I was doing, which mm. the final project was due on this past Saturday. All right. So getting all that wrapped up. And Lisa, the same week, her the company she's working with was rebranding, Ooh. which they have like, I don't know, something like 50 franchises. Yeah. So all those franchise owners have to like rebrand their location, their website, their Facebook page. So she was doing all that. I was doing all my stuff. It was very busy like week and a half. Yeah. But now That's they're crazy. both done. <laughs> That's awesome. Now we're in recovery mode. Yeah. We're yeah. we're How sort of you? you just got off vacation. Yes. So uh took a, a sweet recovery week and now it's like re recover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's like all right, we're like getting back to um getting all the things that I might not have been doing, like so catching up, but also you know, like when you're on vacation, I feel like it is super relaxing, but you're also trying to get a lot done. So it's super exhausting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it was a great time. And strangely enough, the kids multiple times said, thank you for bringing us. This has been so much fun. And I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Like this doesn't happen. It was like, there was like no fighting. The traveling was great. Like, and we were, uh, we we're, we we did planes and stuff like that, but it was uh, it was just fantastic. And actually, uh, so we were staying in hotels, and mm -hmm. you know, so you're traveling, you're in hotels, you are uh, out on vacation, and uh, I I sent some some pictures just to our um, private Facebook group, and so for for breakfast because we didn't have like the hotel breakfast. Mm -hmm. we got egg whites we got uh we got oatmeal and then i had like lunch meat and we had like um just some fruit and stuff like that and i sent a picture of like hotel breakfast and uh you know i had one person was like live it up you're on vacation right <laughs> and and it got me thinking you know so yes, I'm on vacation and I'm going to do a lot of things that I don't normally do. I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to Disneyland. I'm <laughs> right. Um, and I'm going to try a bunch of food and I might, you know, we might have ice cream and, uh, you know, just all kinds of treats and try new restaurants and all that kind of stuff. But I don't need to do it every single, uh, part of the day. And for all intents and purposes, I don't really want to. Oh, did you freeze? Are you still there? I'm, I am here. All right. But anyways, yeah. But so I, I might not necessarily want to because if I do a week of straight up debauchery, I mean, just think about just think about Las Vegas, right? People usually yeah. go for a, um, a weekend or maybe like a day or two because straight up debauchery can only last so long and you feel like crap when you come home, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, and like it, no it, sleep, crap, tons of booze, like absolutely. everything is off. Yeah, and and that uh, you know you're going to be catching up from stuff anyways. So it's like, do I need to catch up from absolutely everything? And how far off do I need need to get? And it got me thinking, like, you know, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Yeah. And and you can do most things that you want. Um, as long as we're keeping it to some type of moderation. And yeah, I'll tell you what, yeah. that, that breakfast was straight jamming. Like, so uh, <laughs> if, if you're ever in a hotel, so number one, we, we didn't have a microwave in our room. So we, I, I actually, I asked for one and they just brought us one, which I thought was pretty dope. That's awesome. we, yeah, we, we had a refrigerator in, in the room. And so I was able to keep that lunch meat. Um, and actually we, so we would have our breakfast and then we would make sandwiches and uh, bring some fruit. Cause you were, and we, we basically had fruit trail mix and sandwiches. And 
I feel like on vacations, you only eat about twice a day anyways. You know, mm-hmm. you, you wake up, you wake up probably a little bit late. You, you might not eat that much and you go right through lunch because it's, you know, it's nine o'clock by the time you get out of the hotel. And so now you have a, um, you, you, you have a big dinner and then you're going to be maybe at the pool and, uh, and get into bed anyways, you yeah. know? So you can set this up super well so that you're, um, sticking to a good plan where you're, uh, managing the damage <laughs> that, that you might, that you might be doing. Uh, or even just like maintaining. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to lose weight, uh, or trying to put on muscle or whatever it is, like you don't have to be actively working against it. And you don't also have to be pushing to the limit to, uh, like make the most gains possible. You can maintain through that short period and, and come out on the other side feeling awesome where like you had a great and you also are still in a good position to reach your goals. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, I, I felt really, so I don't feel that I missed out on anything. And Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's another thing, you know, so almost every night we had some type of, well, actually every day we had some type of treat, right? So we went out to a restaurant, whether it was for lunch or for dinner, uh, we had some ice cream or we, um, did whatever, but number one, um, we did not get the crappy, um, like Mickey mouse, uh, like popsicle ice cream. Like we, we went and looked for some, some sweet ice cream. There was a, there was a Gear deli place that made Sundays and this and that, like there was multiple different places and there was like, Hey, this looks like an ice cream truck. You know, like the, uh, yeah. like the, the dirty, like, uh, and then there was also the, um, like, Hey, that looks like a real treat. And we went and did yeah. those ones. And like, we even talked to the kids like, Hey, uh, what do you guys want? And Hey, uh, is like, what is the restaurant that you want? Oh, you want pizza today? All right, let's find a, a good pizza place. Right. And not just like a slice at the random right. Disney food court. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And so I feel like it, it let us really enjoy all the things that we did and yeah, never feeling super bloated. Cause I just, uh, like ate 10 loads of crap and, uh, and I'll tell you what, I didn't actually, actually, no, I, I take it back. I did one workout, uh, over the, over the week. And so we have a 30 day challenge every month here. And, um, so all it was, was 15 sit-ups and 15 reverse sit-ups. So you can think like dragon flags or something like that, like bringing your feet, feet up instead of bringing your head up. Right. Mm -hmm. So 30 reps total. It took a total of like two minutes, maybe. And, uh, and I also did 50 pushups every day. All right. But on top of that, I was on vacation. So we're walking like 10 miles a day. Yeah. I was going to say like, how many steps have you put in? (laughs) Yeah. We, we took one um, like big rest day and uh, me and Natalie, like just cause we had a lot of time, me and Natalie went and uh, hit up the hotel gym and like I, I played with a kettlebell cause they had kettlebells, did a little bit of uh, running cause uh, it was Natalie's run day um, cause she's been training for um, half marathon. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was it. And I came back feeling good. Um, I'm tan. I'm <laughs> looking good, feeling good. And, and really, and now's the time to uh, to max out. Yeah, it's super like compensation. Well rested. You're ready to hit some PRs. <laughs> yep, <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, so it it was pretty good. Yeah, and really, I mean, like a lot of the stuff you were talking about is like not feeling bloated and coming back and feeling great. And I mean, when you've got day after day, if you're you know on vacation for a week you're going to lose a whole day feeling crappy. Like these things are, you know, having a great time and feeling good and maintaining your progress are not mutually exclusive. Mm. It's not either or it can be both. And by, you know, addressing this all or nothing because that the either or is a lie. That's the, the all or nothing thinking and it screws you over. 
<laughs> big time. Right. Right. It's like I'm either 100% on with my nutrition or with my workout plan or and if I can't be if I can't do it exactly as written, then screw it. <laughs> right. That that doesn't help at all. Like that it's not it's not a real thing. That is not reality. I'll tell you what, I I have a big problem with this um in other aspects too. So even like you know just r running the gym and you're like, "All right, I want to um so actually we just did a running seminar." And and it's like, "All right, setting up this running seminar. It's like, all right, I need to schedule the time. I need to, uh, put together information. I need to, uh, like post about it. I need, there's like 10 million things that I need to do for this. And you go, I can't, <laughs> you know? And, uh, I'll tell you what, Nat Natalie helps me with, with this a lot. And, um, I've had other people who are pretty good at helping me just break this down and go, what are the things you can do? Right. And so today I might only need to do this one thing. Right. And now just do that thing. Just do this thing. Just do this thing. And now you're, uh, you're moving through. Actually, we talked about this at the running seminar. Like when, when you're changing your mechanics in the running, right. You can't just go out and do it all. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have to take one piece and let's practice this. All right. Then take the next piece. You know, the, the rest of your running might be crap. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, keep doing that crap. Uh, because that's what you know how to do and work on this piece. And once you've got that running, then go ahead. And actually we talk about this with members as, as they, as they come in, it, it's like uh, everyone wants to be the, the person who is uh, they work out, you know, six days a week. It's part of their life. They're eating well, they're sleeping good. And it's like, you can't go from none to all. You have to start with, with that little piece. And yep. when you do, that's the January 1st, uh, uh, New Year's resolutionists who do it fine for a month, maybe even two if they're really uh, killing it, but they go right back to their old ways because they tried to do all or nothing and all or nothing only works if you're jumping a cliff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Ricky Bobby. If you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> but like <laughs> as soon as he wasn't first, his whole life comes crashing down. He loses his identity. And mm -hmm. you realize like there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in between those. <laughs> there's second place, third, oh, there's yeah. even fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean like that really is how people approach it. And I think, you know, you've got like whatever social media influencers you're looking at, and you've got professional athletes who are showing their workouts and their meals. And it's like, well, that's what I have to do. But you're mm -hmm. comparing yourself to people who have spent their whole lives doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Decades doing it. And if you're yeah. on day one, you can't do what someone with decades of training can do. It's right. going to be miserable. And so, yeah, you're going to fall off and you're going to quit. You're, you're, you're setting yourself up for just despair. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and so, really like recognizing like that's how they started. That's how everyone starts is they started with whatever lifestyle and then they changed one thing and then another thing changed, whether it was intentional or not. Mm -hmm. Like that's how you get to where you are and that's how you get to where you want to be is one little thing at a time. Yep. I just talked to somebody recently who has lost like almost a hundred pounds and they, um, they said they did it by accident. And I was like, what? <laughs> First, <laughs> like you don't lose a hundred by accident, but they were like, I started walking, you know? And it was like that, that set, set the tone. And it was just like doing these little things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if, if you tried to, um, do the best workout program ever and the best diet ever, it probably would not happen. You, you have to learn along the way and, uh, and failure is part of that. So going out and seeing what, what can I handle, whether it, like, so for me with uh, vacation, it's like, all right, how much can I handle and still be, uh, be on track without mm -hmm. feeling like total crap and you're going to mess that up. And then you go, Oh, you know what? That uh, two meals was too many. <laughs> and yeah. 
that's it. Well, and that's like, you know, I think of it um, as like either like a spectrum, like a scale or a dial, you know, turning it up, um, turning it up and down because that's exactly it. So if two meals was too much, it's like you, you were, maybe you're, you operate daily at an eight where your nutrition is 80% solid. Your workouts are 80% there. And when you went on vacation, you turned it down to a two and you're like, mm, that's not quite right. Like that doesn't feel good. So you turn it back up to a four, right? And like, okay, this feels good. I can, I can handle this for a few days and then I'm going to turn it back up once I'm back home. Right. Right. Versus off on like that's, that's your yo-yo dieting of like, I'm going strict whole 30 for the rest of my life. Okay. I made it four days and now I'm just eating a box of donuts <laughs> because yeah. what's the, right? Like there is middle ground. And so, you know, giving yourself permission, if you are crushing it right now and your goals, uh, like you're moving toward your goals really well. And you know that Labor Day is coming up and you've got a trip planned to the lake or whatever. And you're like, yeah, I'm probably going to put all the weight back on that I just lost over the summer. Like, give yourself permission to be in between. Like, you don't have to skip everything and have no fun. And you don't have to blow it out completely and just give up on any, any health food or whatever <laughs> during that trip. You right. can you can pick the things that you want to enjoy and pick the things that you want to maintain. Right. Now I'm going to actually flip the script here. And so, because I, I do believe that. And I also believe that there's lots of things that I need to do all or nothing as a test. And absolutely because, um, there, there's sometimes that, uh, it, you know, I feel like if I wouldn't have dove headlong into, um, actually CrossFit and nutrition, right. <clears throat> Where it's like, I'm going paleo and I am not like, I was reading labels and if it had any type of sugar that was added, I would not have it. So it was like, I was not touching ketchup. I was not touching, you know, I would only have mustard. I would like it, it was like absolutely ridiculous. And I was, yeah. a, I was a, a pain in the butt to be around, right? <laughs> but I really needed it to, um, to get into, uh, like, or just to, to get in a mindset to actually try this and go, what the heck does this even mean? And mm -hmm. so I think that it really helped me understand it. Now, it was something that did not last forever. Right. And, um, but I wonder... Do you sometimes have to have the mindset that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this forever because you actually believe in it, right? And then you have to lose the the belief in it to um, to like move on to that next thing and use the information that you gained from it. I would say, well, I mean, I'm sure it depends on the person because, I mean, I did the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like straight into I'm doing – CrossFit.com, every workout, and I'm doing zone. And yeah. I'm weighing and measuring everything I eat. Uh, but you and I are, we're already very health and fitness oriented. Mm. And so for people who have never done that, like someone who's never played sports, who yeah. didn't have a hippie mom <laughs> <laughs> with a health growing up, yeah. uh, I think it's that, that shift is huge. And to think that you're going to do it forever can be really discouraging when you get like a week or two in. So, so those things, a lot of times I talk about that as an experiment, like you said, like, Hey, let's try this out. Like whole 30 is a great example. Like try it for 30 days. Let's see what happens. And yeah. then, you know, if they should really call it like whole 60, 30 days of strict and then like another 30 days of tapering things back in and figuring yeah. out what's gonna what that maintenance is but approaching it with that thought of like here's an experiment let's see what happens okay and then and then you can if if you take the time to be reflective about it then you can look at it and be like here are the things that worked really well 
here are the things that I totally hated. Here are the things yeah. that I really missed, you know, and where those things intersect is your lifestyle. <laughs> right. Right. And so, so yeah, I, I like thinking about it that way. Um, right. This is an experiment to gather information and figure out what's going to work best. Yeah. I said that I like even just going over this in my mind right now, I feel like there's time and place for both. Right. Mm -hmm. So number one, I think that like that moderation is the key, right. The, to consistency. Right. And so I want to find what is the thing that I can do the most consistent. And that's usually going to be some type of moderation where you, you have some flexibility in there. Um, whether it's with exercise or, um, or, or anything just in life in general. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that if I would not have, uh, uh Oh, I hope somebody's not here. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I think that I won't get like for, for me personally, mm -hmm. I sometimes have to go headlong and go. Everyone else is wrong. I'm doing the right thing and then go, okay, I guess I can do this thing, you know? And I, I think that's sort of interesting, especially like just with dealing with people. Uh, yeah. The, the best way to the, those new habits is to do them uh, slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes uh, like if, 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 at least for me, if I'm doing things slowly like that, I might not actually believe it as much. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like, if you have some new, uh, like mobility program and you're like, yeah, you should do it three days a week. But if you only get it two, you know, it's like, okay, only, all right, only two, maybe one. Like, yeah. And, yeah. and it's really easy to fall off. And it's like, sometimes you just need that straight up discipline of every single day that this is the only way. And then you, you earn the right to give yourself, um, the break and be okay mm -hmm. with it. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that it's sort of a, a, t a touchy thing. Like where, where do you sit on these? It is. Yeah. I think that's where it is kind of personalized as far as, uh, like someone's personality and mm -hmm. also life circumstance. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I know there've been situations like when, uh, oh, hey. game changers, that documentary came I'm out doing a Facebook live. I'm doing so a Facebook a documentary live. about veganism, essentially trying to make the argument that, you know, plant-based veganism is the way to go. And so everyone's like, I think I should do it. <clears throat> and yes. so my response to that was, okay, there are two ways you could go big. And let's say for 30 days, you're going to go all vegan and see what happens. Or we could take like a tapered approach and take it step by step and start adding more, uh, Vegetables. more plant into your diet. Right. Yes. I got <laughs> a funny so, story. So, so then it's a question of like, for that person, what does your shopping look like? What does your cooking knowledge look like? Uh, do you have other people in the house that you're cooking for? you know, all of those things. <clears throat> so then it, 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 I don't know, it's more personalized of yeah. what's going to work better. Is it that you have to do this right all right now, or are we going to taper it? That's actually so funny. Cause I, I was just talking to somebody recently. And so we were talking about nutrition and, uh, <laughs> they said that, uh, well, so our, our goal was to, um, eat more meat and eat more vegetables. So one serving of vegetables a day, right? And having trouble with it. They're like, I don't really like them, right? <laughs> and multiple, like just a couple weeks later, said that they were watching Game Changers. What do you think about veganism, right? <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I I'll tell you what, it's not for you yet, right? <laughs> Be because it's it's like, so like you said, what are you going to eat? Um, how are you going to shop? L let's start with a, a vegetable that you like, right? Mm -hmm. And let's try and add that in one, one time per day, <laughs> right? 
And yeah, if, if you, I, yeah, I actually, I, I like that. If, if you don't have the capacity to do this yet, then, then we can't, if, if you are yeah. ready to just jump all in and do it well, cause so even just, if you're going to be, um, vegetarian, vegan, anything like that, what foods are you going to eat that are still going to keep you healthy? Are you actually going to eat vegetables like, um, like leafy greens and things like that? Or is it going to turn into, I'm eating pizza because it doesn't have any meat on it. And, um, uh, like all, so, uh, yeah, so often, especially vegetarianism turns into, uh, bread and cheese. (laughs) <laughs> yeah right <laughs> which is fantastic because it's like hey i get pizza grilled cheese and uh macaroni and cheese and pasta alfredo and you know all this stuff and it's not necessarily making me healthy mm-hmm. but i'm sticking to uh the parameters of this thing but it's yeah. like yeah i guess you you really have to know the ins and outs of it and th- these are the actual principles, not just the, the the small rules on the side that keep you in bounds. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that that's probably one of the, the biggest things that you need to do. Is yeah. And keep that up. I feel like that is like the, a great example of all or nothing. It's mm. like carnivore versus vegan. Yeah. <laughs> right. You have to be, you have to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe. Maybe the uh, carnivores could eat some more fruit and vegetables, and maybe the vegans could eat a little bit more fish and meat, and right. everyone will be a little bit healthier. <laughs> yeah, and it sounds like an omnivore, which uh, would be pretty neat. Weird. Some weird animal <laughs> that yep. eats both. Yeah. But yeah, even, you know, we've been talking about nutrition a lot, but like workouts too, um, you know, you start going to the gym and – you know, it's like, well, I can't make it three days this week. I remember people doing this. I'm sure you've mm-hmm. had people. Yeah. Well, I won't be able to make it this many times this month. So I just, can I pause it or whatever? And it's like, dude, you can, if you can show up at all, that is a win. Like yeah. one is better than zero. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, and again, like when you get into the all or nothing mindset, then you start to think, well, if I'm not there three days a week, or if I'm not there five days a week, because that's what I've been doing to try to, you know, break this plateau. If I can't make it five days a week, well, now what's the point? Like, I'm not even going to get the gains that I want. So might as well not even do it. Speaking of, we uh, had, had, um, had a workout just recently. And uh, it was front squats. Like, so three front squats at the top of the minute. And then as many pushups as you can, all right, 12 minutes. And we're like, all right, we want, um, you to get like, so, um, we're, we're hoping that people would be pushing that like 80 to a hundred. All right. And had one person, <clears throat> I think they did 25 in the first one. And then they actually like, they, they couldn't anymore. Right. And they're like, I probably should have done 10. Right. It was a 12 minute AMRAP. And, uh, if, if, uh, if they would have done 10 every minute, they would have had 120, which was even over <laughs> what we were talking about. Right. But sometimes we get, we get stuck in that, that, Hey, everything I got right here. Right. And, yeah. and actually I think that that has been very common in, in CrossFit. People see, um, like, Hey, get as much as you can done. Well, sometimes getting as much as you can done is take, taking a, a little bit of a rest. And if you give me a pile of mulch in my front yard and you say, move this to the back and you're going to do it with a shovel and a wheelbarrow, right? You're not, and if, even if you say, hey, get this done as fast as possible, right? That might be this, <sighs> right? And yep. you're, you're going to keep moving. And, uh, but if I go, <sighs> all right, you're going to have to stop grab a lawn chair and some lemonade and take a rest before you get to go again. And you, you're not going to get as much done. You're, you're pacing. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually this is what, um, Rich Froning really brought to CrossFit was it. it, I think that in, in CrossFit originally, because you're like high intensity, everyone thought max all the time until you Mm -hmm. explode. And if you explode, just keep going. Right. 
And all of a sudden you, you had this, and yet, you know what? There was like spitting and slobbering, right? And all of a sudden you had this guy who isn't starting out at the top of the pack, but he's, but he's there. Right. And then as people are dropping off, he's going and they're like, he doesn't even look like he's trying. It's like, well, (laughs) he's going really fast, but he's, uh, but he, he's keeping it sustainable. And, uh, if if we can take that into anything and you know, that AMRAP mentality, as many reps as possible in this job. And how can I make that, uh, sustainable throughout the duration of the work? Yeah. Yeah, there was a guy on Joe Rogan a long, I don't know, this was a long time ago. He was a student of Pavel Sassoulin. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was talking about this with training. Like if you want to train someone to do however many pull-ups, you know, if their max is five, then you aren't going to do five pull-ups today. You're going right. to do two. And you're going to do two the next day and the next day. But if you do five right off the bat, you're not going to be able to do anything any pull-ups for a couple days right and so now you've done five pull-ups but the person who only did two is now at six at the same day you know and so you know in the context of all or nothing like if you if you try to always do everything Mm -hmm. and uh and do it perfectly then you you know when you don't do it because you know you aren't going to yeah uh then you just fall off and now you've got a now whatever you've got a month of not working out where if you give yourself that permission of like no there is a middle ground if i do something it's better than nothing and i can keep going now you're winning you're winning way ahead of alternate universe yourself (laughs) (laughs) who crushed it for a week and then was so sore they couldn't work out for another two weeks absolutely better is better (laughs) Yep. Yeah. And this, I mean, it goes for everything. I would (laughs) say always remember to never use always and never, (laughs) right? Like that's how you, how it, that's how you end up pushing yourself beyond, uh, reasonable limits, right? right? You, you end up falling apart. You end up creating impossible expectations and then crushing yourself and beating yourself up for not doing something that no one can actually do love it yep so sometimes do all (laughs) but most of the time it's not all or nothing yeah yeah give yourself space on the scale one to ten you don't have to be a ten all the time that's right i like to live my life at seven (laughs) that's have you ever seen sometimes with like (coughs) <coughs> surveys and things mm-hmm. it'll be like scale of one to ten but you can't pick like three or seven yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah because you actually have to make a decision you go yeah that's mediocre mm-hmm. but yeah all right we will see you guys next week don't be all or nothing no actually just always be here 12 o'clock but do that for better <laughs> <laughs> all or nothing Eric, I'll see you later. All right. See ya.